Good afternoon. My name is James Bell, and I have the distinct honor of intro introducing to you this afternoon our MC for this evening. Nada Kerber is a senior counselor with the City of Houston Community Reentry Network Program. A strong community advocate, Nada Kerber has over 20 years human service experience providing supportive services to justice-involved individuals. Ms. Kerber holds a Master's of Arts in Clinical Psychology from Texas Southern University. Ms. Kerber has fostered relationships with a wide range of community leaders and stakeholders to support positive social policy. Please welcome our MC for this afternoon, Ms. Nater Kerber. Thank you, Mr. Bell, for such a gracious introduction. And everyone, we're so happy to see you today as we, as we watch our new graduates for the fall class of 2022 with CRNP. This is a wonderful day where we are going to celebrate the walk into one's purpose, people graduating, completing the program. And so with no further ado, Ladies and gentlemen, I give to you, please salute our CRMP Fall 2022 graduates. further, I have to say we are so very proud of each and every one of you. Each and every one of you bring special gifts and we are so happy to celebrate them today. We want you to be covered in your walk and so we would like to start with an invocation by Reverend Charles Anderson, pastor of Great Hope Baptist Church. Pastor Anderson. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we do thank you for this occasion, uh, this opportunity that men and women have accomplished this milestone in their lives. Father, as they begin to take the next steps in their progression toward their destiny, Father, we ask that you would guide them, that you would protect them, and that you would be there with them during the journey. Father, as we finish and go through this ceremony today, God, we ask that you would uh, be a part of it and come in and, and, and help us celebrate this accomplishment in this men and women's life. It's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Anderson. You know, it's wonderful to know that the spirit is in the room, a good and positive spirit. And a positive spirit is what makes us healthy. That's why the health department is here to salute you as well. So I'd like to acknowledge the Houston Health Department leadership team and ask if our director, Stephen Williams, might have a word. Let's give him a hand. 
Well, since they, how y'all doing? Great. Well, since they said we're supposed to acknowledge the team, I guess they should stand up. So, all of these folks are responsible for ensuring that the real program is good. Well, Ned, I want to congratulate you because I knew this was going to be a, an exceptional graduation when I saw Cal Turner and Mary Griffin on the program. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I also want to just take a moment before saying anything to the graduates for acknowledging the work of James Bell. Uh, and I'm acknowledging his work not only because it was good, because James has decided to depart from us uh, at the end, end of the year, but he has really been a steadfast leader in this program, genuine, sincere, and really put all of all, all, all of his heart in ensuring that reentry was a success. And I'll tell you what I told him. Consider this home. We're always going to be here for you. So if you want to come back, we know, we know where you are. You know, I'm always touched when I see the graduates walk in. This is a special occasion. I consider this an opportunity to offer you a new beginning. Let the past be the past, but Let's just draw a line in the sand and start over. I'm hoping that you have been able to gain some skills, uh, work through some issues as you've traveled through the reentry program. I'm really proud of all of the staff in reentry because uh, they're, they're just good at what they do. <laughs> you know, in order to do this work, it takes more than graduating from, from a college or have, having a degree or a certificate. It really takes a heart and sincere commitment to be sincere in doing this work. And that's what we have in the reentry staff. But to the graduates, I want to congratulate you. This is a great milestone. Consider this a new beginning. Congratulations once again. Thanks so much, Director Williams. And just as much as this is an acknowledgement, it's also a celebration. And so at this time, we are blessed to have some inspirational music provided by world-renowned jazz saxophonist, Mr. Kyle Turner. Let's give him a hand. I want to congratulate the graduates. and. Um, Put you in a holiday spirit, you know, you guys are, you know, going to be at home for Christmas and everything. So I want to put you in a holiday spirit, uh, hanging with your family, and congratulations. Um, we're really proud of you, really proud of you. God bless you. Thank you. 
Yes. <laughs> yes, indeed. Merry, Merry Christmas from Kyle Turner. Let's give him another yeah. round of applause. Boy, I'm going into the spirit now. So in addition to our HHD executive team and wonderful, talented individuals from the community, we have some video congratulations from a number of dignitaries, which we will uh, show you now. Good afternoon. I'm Judge Kyle Carter. I want to thank all of our elected officials and thank you to our speakers. Congratulations to the 28th Biannual Houston Community Reentry Network's graduating class of December 2022. You did it. Congratulations, everyone. I want to thank each and every one of you for your hard work, your dedication, and your sacrifice in completing the requirements of the Houston Community Reentry Network program. You've not only taken steps to improve your own quality of life, but in doing so, You've given yourself a brighter future and improved the lives of those around you. You are making a positive difference in our community, and I am so proud of each and every one of you. I'm honored to be able to speak with you today, and I wanna share a message with each and every one of you, and that is that I care. In fact, everyone that's a part of this program cares and wants to see you succeed in your future. As you go through and continue on your walk with a purpose in life, know that others around you are right there ready to help you. We want to see you succeed. We want to see you accomplish great things. And we're right here if you need us. So thank you so much to each and every one of you who have rededicated their lives and undertaken the hard steps necessary, the difficult sacrifice to complete this reentry network program. We're so incredibly proud of you, and I cannot wait to see the great things that you will accomplish as you continue on this walk with a purpose. Congratulations, graduates, and God bless you. Thank you. Hi, this is Bishop James Dixon. I am so excited to join the Reentry Network in congratulating and celebrating the graduates in the 28th graduation class of the Reentry Network program. I have seen what this program can do. I have witnessed change and transform lives through this program. And so let me commend all of the leadership, all of the staff, all of the team for the hard work that you continue to do. But to the graduates, let me say to you, you were created by God to live on purpose. You are here because God has preserved and protected you for such a time as this. Wherever you go, remember this, your presence has purpose and your purpose has power. Did you get it? Come on, say it. My presence has purpose and my purpose has power. Say it again. My presence has purpose and my purpose has power power. Your past is behind. The present is now, but your future is filled with potential. Go be the difference maker you were born to be. And whatever you do, come on, say it. I believe in God and I believe in me. Congratulations. You are a champion, a winner. You overcome. Now go change the world for the better. Somebody needs you to give them a lift. Tell them, walk in purpose. Hello, I'm Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee and represent you in the United States Congress. Hello, graduates. Congratulations to you. You are the very important people of the day. In fact, you are walking in our purpose. Let me congratulate the city of Houston's reentry program. Uh, it's outstanding network that has helped so many people. But again, as I said, today is your day. This is a day for reordering, repurposing. This is a day for embracing of your family. This is a day for being able to reflect on that basic embrace of best evidence practices that have put you on your pathway. This is a day to reinforce your own personal commitment that I will make a difference. I am change. In fact, I'm going to be a tree shaker and a change agent. I can see it in each and every one of you. I had the ability to attend some of these programs personally. And I'm not there with you 
in this day. I'm in Washington, D.C., but I did not want the moment to be missed to thank all of your teachers and all of those who head the program, to thank the city of Houston, but again, as I said, to reinforce the fact, this is your day. Let no one take it away. This is your family's day. This is the opportunity for them to see you walking in your purpose, but walking in our purpose and making this new commitment, a recommitment to yourself for a future life that is steady and focused on your goals of success and aspiration. Let you be true to yourself. Let you be guided about how great you are and what you can do in greatness and let you also be reminded of what you can do for others. I've always said, it's better to give than receive. I see this day as you giving to your family, to the community, as you walk in your purpose, as you collectively walk in our purpose. Again, I wish you the very best, and I wanted to challenge you today. I'm excited about this graduation. I see it as your gift to the community, as you've been given a gift through this wonderful City of Houston reentry program. Don't forget, you're walking in your purpose. You're collectively walking in our purpose. But remember that purpose is to be the best that you can be. I see it in you. I hope to meet each of you one day. I hope we can link arms, be the change agents, and be the best that we can be for our families, for ourselves, for our community, and yes, our God. Congratulations again. This is your day. Walk in your purpose. This is your Mayor Sylvester Turner, here to congratulate each of you upon your completion of the City of Houston Community Reentry Network Program. It is our sincere hope that you will apply the new insights and skills you have acquired to continue to move in a positive direction. Each of you have unique talents and gifts which can sustain you and benefit your families and the greater Houston community. On this, the day of the 28th Biennial Community Reentry Network Program graduation, we commend you on your diligence in completing the program and celebrate your new walk into your purpose. Congratulations. All right. You know, I want you to know that the words were important, but I also want to talk about time. Each one of the elected officials that did those videos for you stepped away from a million busy things that they were doing. Some had to be tracked down out of city hall, some had to come out of court, some had to come out of the, the national capital, going back and forth. But they were like, whatever happens, we are going to acknowledge reentry. So I just want you to know how important you are to so many people. I also want to briefly acknowledge a couple of dignitaries. Um, uh, Council Member Abby Kamen right. from our city, Houston City Council. And I'd like to call up briefly Ms. Yoroba Harris, representing Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee. She has a little something to acknowledge. Let's give her a welcome. Awesome, fantastic. Thank you so much. How are y'all doing? This is a celebration. 28 years. I think we ought to give a great applause to that. 28 years. And congratulations to each of you. Um, as Ms. Nader said, some of the officials had to be drug out of the U.S. Capitol, and that is our Congresswoman. But she wanted to make sure that you heard her voice in saying congratulations to you, that you are the change agents. So congratulations again to all of you on behalf of Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee as you are joining in your purpose, as you are walking in your purpose. We applaud you. We congratulate you. We salute each and every one of you on behalf of Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee. And then I also have a special commendation from the Congresswoman. And each of you will also be receiving, be receiving a special congressional certificate in your honor of this celebration from the United States House of Representatives, Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee. 
And then she also wanted to acknowledge this wonderful program, so I'm going to ask Dr. Dr. James, Dr. James, if you would come forward. And it's so awesome to see, I know we're going to hear from him later, our chief, Chief Troy Finner. So wonderful to have him here on the pla platform. Yes. Yes. And to our wonderful council member, council member Kamen, as well as our senator, our wonderful senator, John Whitmire. So awesome to be here on the platform with you all. But again, on behalf of the Congresswoman, she also wanted to congratulate this wonderful program on 28 years. To, so to the City of Houston Community Reentry Program, Reentry Network Program, on the occasion of your fall 2022 graduation ceremony. The certificate reads, now therefore be it resolved that on behalf of the constituents of the 18th Congressional District of the State of Texas, I take great pride in recognizing the City of Houston Community Reentry Network Program on the occasion of your fall 22 graduation ceremony. Walking in your purpose. Congratulations to all the graduates again on this wonderful accomplishment, and I wish you much success in your future. Thank you to the Reentry Network Program for your dedicated service. Your continued hard work and excellence reflects the pride that is the spirit of the great state of Texas and the United States of America. You are most deserving of the respect, the admiration, and the commendation of the United States Congress. So on behalf of Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee, I present this to you. And it's also to say thank you to our great mayor, Mayor Sylvester Turner, the most great mayor there is. Thank you, Yoruba. Thank you, Yoruba. Man, this is so exciting, you know, and the best is still coming on, you know. If you look at the program, you notice there's a visual image where it's walking in purpose, and you see there's steps that people are taking. Sometimes there's steps that it could be a stumbling block or it could be a stepping stone, okay? And so we want to also hear from some folks that can talk a little bit, they want to recognize you, they want to talk a little bit about those stepping stones and the direction you're going in. And so we want to hear from Ms. Inez Ihezwe, project specialist from Alvin Community College in charge of the, their reentry program. Ms. Ihezwe. Good afternoon, everyone. And y'all look good. Y'all look real good. And I just want to say thank you for this opportunity to say something. But I would like for us to give a round of applause for those people that have supported you all, including the staff here. You know, often it's so difficult to go through some things and not have anyone with you or someone standing by you and supporting you. And so it's important that we recognize that. So I just want to say thank you for all the families, all the staff, all the reentry program, everyone that's here on the stage for being here, standing in the gap for you. So thank you all so much. Um, the remarks I want to make, it's a word that was just kind of placed in my heart when I was asked to say something, and it's perseverance. And as we move through life, we face a lot of challenges. And despite of those challenges, we continue to persevere. So I want to encourage you guys to continue to persevere. This is just one step. And you've done it. You did this for, what, three months, 90 days? And it's hard because every day you got to get up, you got to face some different stuff because you all have families, some of you all have children. I know many of you all here, so I know some of the challenges that you face with no gas money or just struggling to get out of bed because you're dealing with some other stuff. You know, so it's important that you continue to persevere because you have your whole life in front of you. It starts now. So congratulations to each of you all and keep pressing forward. Thank you. Thanks so much, Ms. Hes Hesway. I think it's important to note that many of our graduates have gone on to do other things after graduation. Many are in training programs, walking that walk, um, with the help of Alvin Community College and other training resources. And many of our graduates who have gone through the program aren't able to be here today because they are employed. Let's, so we, we want to celebrate that as well. So moving on, I want to 
give a brief introduction about our next speaker. Our next speaker is known as the Dean of the Texas Senate because he's the longest serving uh, senator in the state of Texas. But many people may not know that he's a graduate of University of Houston and when he was working his way through school, he was helping welfare recipients and other people that were dealing with a lot of other types of challenges. And he has not forgotten that. He has not forgotten where he came from. And he has never forgotten the City of Houston Community Reentry Network Program. So with no further ado, I would like to bring to the stage our Senator, John Whitmire. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Native. I'd like to thank God for allowing us to come together today. Because we need days like today. There's enough sadness and stress in our lives that we need to come together and have this celebration. And you won't see this on the news tonight because they only run the bad news. So let's rejoice in what we're experiencing today. First, I got here a little late and I was in the hall and some of the graduates started calling me by my name. That means we've worked together before <laughs> to get to this day because I definitely know second and third chances work. So let me just emphasize today, ladies and gentlemen, this is a celebration, but it's also a beginning. First of all, I saw the thank you, and I appreciate the professor asking us to recognize your families. I don't think we did a good enough job. Y'all need to turn around and look at them and give them a standing ovation. Because, because they're here today for you. And I want to thank you, because I know this day wouldn't be here without so much of your involvement. The reason I wanted to make sure I was here today is I wanted to emphasize, as I just said, it's a beginning. It's a beginning for you to demonstrate how effective this program is. Because you see, I'm always trying to get additional funding, as well as this team up here on the stage, Mr. Williams and his staff. Just think about it for a moment. You heard the dignitaries, our great mayor, but there is a lot of competition in this city and this state for monies. You know it if you've been in TDCJ. We don't have the right programming up there because some of my colleagues in the Senate don't understand how important rehabilitation is. They'd rather spend it on highways and maybe additional water for West Texas. But I know the people program is what we're placed on this earth for. So let me just emphasize to you, while you're helping yourself and celebrating with your family, this, this restart in your future, and you have a bright future and a long life in front of you, the reason I wanted to be here today is I wanted to tell you how important you are to help other people, people that are going to come behind you. Because you see, we parole 70,000 people a year in the state of Texas. Now just think, if we had a reentry program for each and every one of them. In fact, my vision is, Chief, that if you're paroled from TDCJ, the city of Houston, Mr. Williams, meets you at the city limits and welcomes you to Houston and provides you a job opportunity, some housing and some health care, and an opportunity to land on your feet. But I can't do that without your support and your success. So let's get fired up. I'm fired up, so I want you to be fired up. I want you to be fired up for what you're experiencing today, for what you are providing for people that you know you left behind at the walls. So let's get down to work, family. There's going to be good days. There's going to be bad days in all of our lives, but we got to help them through the bad days because there's more good days than bad days. I need your help to help other people. Let's go to work. Let's go to work. Let's give a hand to our senator of the Senate District 15, Senator John Whitmire. Thank you. And I mean, he always goes to work. He's about, what do y'all need to make it happen, OK? And so, well, like you said, I'm just going to reiterate, what you do gives us the ammunition to say, this is what people are capable of. Yeah, yeah. This is what's in people's heart that really um, is going to make a difference. And so help us help you. OK? Thank you. 
Okay, so now we're going to kind of turn the page. You've heard from some people that want to congratulate you. But now we're going to have an opportunity to hear from some of the participants of the program. And before we do that, let me just mention, this program will be aired a week from today on HTV. So, and we want to uh, acknowledge HTV in the house. Let's do a shout out. No plug, HTV. They are here to make sure that this is important programming and that if your family member wasn't able to make it or maybe one of your colleagues or classmates that is at work and wasn't able to make it, you'll have an opportunity on next Thursday night to watch it on HTV. Put your uh, DVRs or whatever recording device on, okay? So with that said, we are going to hear from some of our participants. to the Cashmere Community Center to a job fair. I had been at my wit's end. I had just come off of prison from a DWI. I'm on parole. Um, and I had been putting in applications everywhere to no avail. When I got here, I was at my wit's end. I, was, I had lost all hope. And one of the representatives asked me what I was going through um, and had I been to prison. And when I said yes, she said, we've got a place for you. I joined the reentry program um, for the community support, um, for the classes to better myself. And this place, I recently got a job. This place has just been a support to me. Uh, the program's important because we need that support. Um, coming out of prison, um, being dejected and at the lower end of life, you know, we just don't know where to go. We don't know what to do. And this place gives you the support and the resources that you need to come back into the society, to be a positive contributor in the Houston area. Hey, good afternoon. My name is Pradell Lammons, and I'm here to tell you about this program at the Cashmere Garden. This is a program, is a springboard for you to readjust and how the way you act and how the way you behave. But most of all, share your old ways. And, and, it, and this program is it, what you put in it is what you're going to get out of it. And the Cashmere uh, Multi-Service is a hidden gem in the community. The, the reentry program is my highlight of, and it's focused of all of this because it would help me to reintegrate back into society and shape the way that I think and behave. But after being gone for 27 years, I finally got it right. The team here welcomed me as if I never left and they embraced me and encouraged me to go further. I know there are some people that say, what is this program is about? What is it for? Do it need still funding? But I'm here living proof 
to, to tell you, to show you that after being gone for 27 years and having a job for the first time, and within 90 days, I become a manager of a corporation. So for that to be said, I'm very welcome. I'm, I'm grateful for the program in itself. And I'd like to take this time to thank Mr. Cantu, Ms. Veronica Peters, Ms. Henry, and for keeping the community and the people that come to this program and keep it going. I thank you and I appreciate y'all for helping me. Hi, my name is Kevin Stevens and I'm here at the reentry program for the city of Houston. I was I did the program uh, several months ago and today I'm here just to, to let you guys know that the program is one of the best programs I've ever seen since I came from the, from, from the penitentiary. They equip us with some, some tools to be able to go get, be reintroduced in society, um, how to communicate in a job place, how to do a resume, how to, to interview for a job, just basic skills that we need for everyday life. The program is a very viable program. I would, I would recommend it to anyone. I was fortunate enough to go through a job fair a few weeks ago and got hired on a job working at St. Joe's Hospital, all because came to the program, worked the program, let the program work me. I would, I would recommend this program to, to anyone. It's very good. I thank you for you guys for being able to uh, allow me to share a little bit of uh, what the program did for me. And I just hope that all of you can get the same out of it that I got out of it. Thank you very much and have a blessed day. Those are some very inspiring words on video, but we also have several participants that are going to address us in person about their experience. And I'd like to call them all to the stage at this time and they will each share a little something with you. Ms. Deneen, I'm sorry, Mr. Raymond Boudreau. Miss, give me my hand. Followed by Miss Robin Osby. And finally, Mr. Stefan Jackson. Well, unfortunately, I didn't remember my speech. My name is Raymond Boudreau. I did 25 years in the Texas Department of Criminal Justice. I don't have much time, but everybody that's standing in this room today, I mean, sitting in this room today, there's no way to accomplish your goal without properly managing your time. And it's a commentary that I wrote called Time. Time has crafted my existence on multiple levels and has led me to believe that I must not squander it any longer. Getting incarcerated at the tender age of 17 years old has been a staple in my life, a staple that's been affecting me in my life and my ability to explore life to the maximum extent. This being the case, I have structured my time around increasing the quality of my life on every level by practicing awareness, being mindful of the things I invest my time into, the aids that I use, and steering clear of thoughts that can become detrimental to growth, something in which I have come to regard as being not only unacceptable, but against everything that I now stand for in life. Thanks to time and doing time, I have developed an understanding of who I am. Oftentimes, I struggle with my evolution, tending to stick too closely to my guns when it comes to certain things. Some would say that it's, extremely, it's extreme to attempt to put forth an effort to account for all of your time as stringently as I do within this setting. However, I'm of the opinion that time is the single most precious commodity that everyone possesses. It's of no consequence where you're from, where you've been, or by what means you went about acquiring your knowledge. The proper utilization of your time is extremely beneficial. That which has led me to believe that most of the individuals who aren't successful have yet to figure out that time well managed creates an atmosphere that's conducive to achieving the results desired. In my not so distant past, I live without any regard to how I spend my time. Though time has delivered me on the cusp of being released, 20 plus years, and now that I'm out of prison, 
after my, you know, 20 plus years after my arrest, excuse me, hindsight enables me to understand where I've erred at, knowing that a commitment towards never erring this far on the spectrum of wrongdoing again. Never erring this far on this spectrum of wrongdoing again. While I'm uncertain of why this journey is, was a part of the plan, I am grateful for a number of reasons to discover this most precious commodity readily at my disposal. It's a blessing to have been provided another opportunity to expend my time wisely from the vantage point of consciousness. In closing, one must gather information on and about what you have in mind to not only do with your time, you must lay the framework for your dreams, goals to be realized by investing every second, minute, hour of your day, focusing your intentions while balancing it against unexpected developments. Events that generally derail us from the tracks we're on, relationships, pregnancies, marriage, divorce, deaths, injuries, etc. But the key is to stay the course. Tracks are laid to provide us with direction. It's a must that you stay focused and utilize your time wisely, no matter what life throws our way. But if you want to do better, or you want better, or you're going to do better, you got to focus on that new better. Thank you all for your time. Ms. Robin Osby. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Robin Osby. I would like to talk to you about my experience with the CRMP program. The CRMP program will change your life. The CRMP program means so much to me because it has helped me to understand me, the value I mean, the program also has helped me to find purpose and has, has given me the opportunity to walk in my purpose. The program have up, I, well, with the, up, I have obtained a wonderful job as a customer service outreach specialist with the CRMP program where I work here at the Multicultural Center. Um, do a lot of outreach for the CRMP program which the program has enabled me to actually share my journey, um, actually share my journey with the CRP program doing outreach. I will forever be grateful, the CRP program, because it's where I begin to walk in my purpose. And when I say when I begin to walk in my purpose, I didn't even think I can speak. I didn't even think I can be here right now. But it has helped me to walk in my purpose and to share the journey of being able to be in prison and being able to accept the fact that you was there, but you can't recover from being in prison. <laughs> the food that I've actually has did so much more. Um, it has given me the opportunity to meet some amazing people here that I value too and that I see change. And then it has helped me to help others that's out here, even the ones that's just graduating here, because I do do peer support here, actually. So this is where I'm able to look at them right now in the crowd, because I know every single one of them. And to be able to, they've been able to support me as I do peer support here in person. And lastly, I am proud of myself. And I am proud of everyone that's here. <laughs> so that's graduating today um, because we are the future. We are here to change. And if it wasn't for us joining the program, the CRMP program, we wouldn't be able to walk in our purpose. And when you say purpose, purpose meaning, yes, it's a journey, though. You know, we all have a journey. We all have a testimony. So your testimony not be, by, be not testimony, but we are here for a purpose and to find our purpose. And when I say to join the CRP program, because it will change your life. Lastly, if you have been touched by the criminal justice system, I highly suggest that you join the CRP program because it will change your life. Not for the, not for the bad, but for the good. So I applaud every single one of you guys Thank y'all for the support. And I know it's so much more for all of us to be able to do 
as we go on this journey to reaching our purpose. Thank you, Ms. Alexman. Thank you, Mr. Bell. Thank you, Ms. Maria, my counselor. Thank you, Ms. Veronica. And thank you to Ms. Henry and Mr. Cantu for actually giving me the, to do this speech today, um, the courage to do it. So I appreciate every single one of y'all and the support that y'all given me and the support for giving me the opportunity to hold a job here. Thank you. Finally, we have brief remarks by Stephon Jackson. I wanted to get fired up too, but, <laughs> but somebody told me not to. Told me I bet not, <laughs> Mr. Cantu. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, Hello. coordinators, graduates. I hope all is well with you on this evening of success. My name is Stephon Jackson. I've been called upon this evening to enlighten pioneers about the importance of the CRMP program. First off, the phrase reentry, defined as law, the action of retaking or repossession. Grace with the group of leaders we were provided with, that's exactly what we were given the opportunity to do, right. re Outside of the curriculum, which is the sole purpose of any program, I found new family, friends, which is one of the most important factors of rehabilitating back into society a good support system, a group willing to invest more than just an hour and 30 minutes of their time, but a group willing to go to the stream to see us succeed. I feel this program is very important and can be used as one of the key tools to terminate recidivism and the I can't because I got a felony stigma. The, the program has provided a place of love, safety, and production because we could have been anywhere else falling short of our destiny. In closing, I leave you with this, the eagle. The eagle is the only other species with a 70 year lifespan, but at the age of 40, must make a decision whether it will live or die. The very tools it uses for survival fails. His claws curves under, his beak curves under, his feathers grow tremendously. Unable to soar or to feed itself, must find a rock, a place to reenter. It must break with his claws must break his beak and then he has to wait until that beak has grown back to defeather himself. After then, he's able to re-enter into another 30 years of life. I encourage everyone with ears to be as strong as that eagle, willing to break off the old you and re-enter. Thank you. Reentry. So, you know, what else can you say? There's nothing I can add. The person is here, the man of the hour, who is here, who has taken away from doing everything. You all know everything that's going on these days. But he decided that people in reentry are a priority. This is a person who is the police chief for the fourth biggest city in the state, I mean, in the, in the United States of America. He could be anywhere, but he's here with us today. So let me introduce our own police chief, Troy Finner. Where is uh, Mr. Lynn? turkey leg cut, I was back there working. And I know uh, you wanted me to stay in program, but I, when I, I don't craft things, I move by the spirit of the room, okay? All right, all right. And uh, I want y'all, when you look at Keynote, it in pictures somebody up here and somebody down here. I want you to just get in your minds like we're in a big circle right now and having a family discussion because that's how I'm feeling right now. A lot going on around this city. I don't get a whole lot of sleep. Some of y'all don't get a whole lot of sleep. But let me tell you something. Your chief is so proud of you right now. Yeah. 
And I want to thank everybody that's involved in this program, this reentry program. Because just let me share something with you, real short, and I, I promise you, I won't be long. It don't take me all day to say I love you and I'm proud of you. And I'm going to be with you through this walk of life. But in my closet, everybody sitting up here on this stage, important people up here, with, with the exception of me. I'm just Troy from the neighborhood, OK? <laughs> but if my closet door was open wide, you'll see some things that say, that's the chief. So let me, let me tell you something. And this is, this is God on his truth coming from my heart. Don't ever let anybody put you in a box. Yeah. Because something that you've been through, yeah. you go through things in life to be better and to help people. Just as you're giving a hand up, yeah. pay it forward. Everything that you went through, give a person a hand up because it empowers them in everything. I'm listening to all these stories, and, 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 and everybody's fired up right now. 27 years, 23 years, away from your family, your friends, do you know how much things change in one year? And then people, and let me break it down to you. People want to judge you. Do you know how terrified it is for some people just to move from one neighborhood to another neighborhood? You have moved your body, your mind, and your spirit from being, and I don't want to stay on that. I'm just, hear, me, hear my point, because I want to celebrate with you today. Everything each and every one of you been through and you know it, it's not an easy run in there. You're here today, and I'm so very, very proud. So how do we move forward? Thank those, and family, I'm so honored and I'm so glad, and that's why I got up from my seat and went back and said thank you, because they can't do it without you. Everybody has to have one person and I'm going to tell you something. When society starts judging you, <laughs> remember what I said. Remember what your chief said. They ain't no better than you. And those people who like to put people down that's been through things, they're feeling insecure about themselves. So do me a favor. Don't get mad at them. God has empowered you now. And understand where you are in life right now. And when you got power, you pray for people who are less fortunate. And people who are not helping you and clapping and applauding for you, pray for them. But let's look at what we have in front of us. So much help here on this stage. And for me, as the chief of police, I'm excited about it. And let me, let me go a little bit deeper. I need you, OK? I need you. I celebrate you today. I'm, I'm, I'm happy. But I need each and every one. You know why? Because can't nobody help me more than those individuals who've been walking down that road. That's who can help me. And that's who can help the city. So I, I, I want you to know and hear from me how powerful you are right now. Now, another thing. This is a graduation. And it's a new start. And that's going to still be roadblocks. But when those roadblocks when those people or whatever comes in your life and gets you to look back, you look forward. You charge forward, OK? Because God has a purpose. And I was so glad to hear that theme, a purpose. When people are doing wrong, they forget about who they really are. Now y'all got the purpose. <laughs> so let's move forward together. And I am so proud today. And I said it wouldn't take me long, but I'm telling you, man, Ladies, my heart is, 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 is light. It's feeling good. And I don't get a whole lot of good news. So I, I'm going to promise you, as long as I'm chief, if I'm in this city, <laughs> I'm coming here. But we don't make this happen alone. I want to acknowledge somebody who just really don't like a whole lot of talking. But I, please come up, Lynn. Please come up. This is the uh, owner of the turkey leg hut. And uh, let, me, let me tell you something. And I just want him to say just a few words, and I know it's going to be a few because I know him. But when we were trying to set this up, and then I said, hey, look, I, I want something special. And uh, Ms. Kerber, thank you so much. And, and Doc, thank you for what y'all do in your leadership. 
but I wanted something special. I didn't want cold sandwiches and all that. I want, <laughs> let me tell you something. <laughs> the Turkey Leg Hut, world renowned. With people, yeah, yeah. So, because y'all here in Houston, okay? But when people travel to Houston, they come there. So, people who hadn't been here in Houston, I wanted y'all to experience that, and he made it happen. So I just want to say thank you for the support that you give, and uh, just say a few words for me. Thank you. So when the chief asked me to um, come up here, um, I wasn't going to write down nothing, to be honest with you. Um, I'm a time fella, man. Been behind the wall. Started off at the USP. Been on four years. Walked into a lockdown. Had to get back in the car. Y'all decide for what I'm saying. Y'all know what I'm saying. I ain't been going long half as y'all, but the time I did was hard time. I left when my daughter was four months old. Didn't see her till she was a year and a half. That hurt. I understand everything y'all been through. I've been through it. I'm not going to talk you here to death. I know I've heard all those conversations. But I can tell you one thing. I had a, I had a goal in mind when I came home. They say I went to the feds. Um, as you know, they say you can make it jail or hell. I made it hell. I dealt, got into it in my car. Because I was dealing with people in the feds that, as you know, you're not supposed to deal with. You know, um, but these were people that owned Chick-fil-A's, people that owned uh, really big food chains. So it was a lot of people that I wasn't messing with because I was trying to go back down that lane when I got out. So I did mess with these people. And it, 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 and y'all know the consequences sometimes. Y'all know what I'm saying. But it was to benefit my mind. And I had a 90-day mark. Every 90 days I had something. My wife came and saw me every 90 days, every 90 days. I had a mark in my mind. I told her, I said, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do this. And my wife was behind me up 5,000%. Every time she came to visit, I had a sheet of paper. I wasn't even supposed to give it to her. I slid it to her. It wasn't nothing wrong, but it was my thoughts and my goals that she put in place. And the guards knew what I was doing. They knew it wasn't no paraphernalia then. And they asked me, Lynn, what was that you gave her? I said, those, those are my goals. Some of the guards still come in the restaurant right now. I told my wife when I got home, I said, I want to do $3 million. I want to buy the block. We, we've done it all. We've done it all. But, but to understand this, you get a lot of time with people, we forget sometimes our thoughts behind those walls because we get out in this world and the world is moving so fast. Sometimes I still have, I still have those goals that she gave me. I gave her vice versa. And I look at them. I still write on my mirror with her lipstick. And it's the small stuff that you have to understand. Whatever you did behind those walls, keep that same template. They see anything you do over a two-week span, it makes sense. Keep those same notes, keep those same thoughts. And let me say about negative people, they're going to come when you're doing something positive. They're going to call your phone. They're going to say this, let's go out. Sometimes going out. My only club is tur Club Turkey Leg. I don't go out. I don't go out. I have so much fun up there, I don't go I can't imagine when I went out. I put my seatbelt on correct. The chief will tell you, and this honest guard truth, you know the only problem she has with me is putting cones in the middle of the street. I promise you. And, if that, and that's the only problem, I take that problem. That's because the stop cars from hitting cars. he tell you, I, I don't do nothing wrong, man. Ain't nothing like, and we know the holidays is the worst time behind those walls. Thanksgiving and Christmas, them packs we get. I can relate to y'all. I know all about it, man. Holidays are the worst times behind those walls. We think about our family, but then when we get outside, we don't think about our family because we're moving so fast. I'm telling you, you, you forget. I've forgotten sometimes. I'm not going to sit up and say, it, the world moves fast. When that money's coming in, it moves fast, y'all. And all it takes is you go back down that road and you screw. I've seen it. I'm telling you, if you stick on the right path, get your family, your structure, it's good. I just opened up two restaurants with a little baby. I never would have thought I would have been talking to Tillman Petit on the phone. Your, your circle changes when you change. When you change, it changes. I would have never thought, and it's a good thing, I would have had his number on an accident on my phone because I was on the other side of the law. Who gives a damn what people say about you? Yeah. Oh, Leah talking to the man. Get, man, he got a pass. <laughs> you know what I mean, <laughs> if you're in the streets, you're in the streets. You know. I'm just saying to say this. Now my record is being expunged. Now I'm able to reach out to the governor. It's that type of stuff. Understand when you change, God has a way. We call it the hustle guard. God has a way of of putting things in position. So I would have never thought that I would even have access to have a concealed gun license. Wow. But now I'm down to that point because my record has been changed because you, when you do good, good comes back, y'all. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Thank you, man. Thank you, man.
All right, I'm done. Let's give, give them a great big hand. Now, I mean, if it, so many testimonies today, so many things, so many memories to look back on when you find yourself in, the, in, in hard times or people trying to get you to do different things. Know that if you stick with it, if you stick with your plan, yes, you can make a difference. Because that moment, that bad moment, that's going to be behind you. But the fork in the road is which way did you go when that moment came. So, so with no further ado, we're about to do what we came to do. We are about to have the graduates receive their, their certificates of completion. Let us begin. Mr. Kevin Allen. Robin Osby. Camille Barrios. Pamela Bernard. Sebastian Berry. Some Raymond Boudreau. Samuel Bowers. Andre Cronin. Kenneth Cobb. Kenneth Coleman. Sylvia Cordova. Ms. Kiana Crenshaw. Destiny Ely. Jesse Esparta. Kevin Garrett. Paul Hall. Ms. Anitra Holmes. Ms. LaTerrence Holmes. Jesse Hoyos. Mr. 50, Stefan Jackson. Danny Kelly. Mr. David Keith. Ms. Jennifer Lewis. Mr. Curtis Living. Mr. Jonathan Main. Mr. John McBride. Taisha Murray. Darius Ned Nau. The knee of the day. Mr. Keith Grease. Archie Seals Senior. Everett Smith. Mr. Jose Solis. Mr. Nelson Stamps. Kevin Stevens, Senior. Michael Fraser. Olivia Williams. Andrew Willis. Carla Jeffress. Harold Spurlock. Raymond Fletcher. Kevin Benite. Mr. Cornell Thompson.
Fantastic. My God, I am so proud of every one of you. And just contemplating on all the great things that you're going to do in your walk. We have a very special person to give you another musical tribute. A very special person indeed. This person is a Platinum Grammy Award recipient. She sang for 13 years with Patti LaBelle. And she's so multi-talented and so graciously decided that she would be a part of our graduation today. So let's call her forward with no further ado. Let's welcome Miss Mary Griffin. Let me just tell y'all something. It is so good to be here and see you do this. My daddy was a preacher and he used to say, what do you do when you've done all you can? And it seems like you can't make it through. You stand. That's what you've done today. You've gotten through this. This is called discipline. I'm going to be praying for you for the rest of my days. Everybody, millions didn't make it, but you were one of the ones who did. All right? Let's do this, baby.
Somehow we've had a wonderful day. I want to bring back to the floor our James Bell, our yeah. own James Bell, who's going to share some acknowledgments with you. It ain't over, y'all. Yeah, right it, it ain't over. It's just getting started. I'm here to do some acknowledgments, and the first thing I like to do, first of all, acknowledge you, the 2022 fall graduates, give yourselves a round of applause. And, and of course, of course, a special thanks to our mayor, the Honorable Mayor Sylvester Turner, who's been a strong uh, supporter of the Community Reentry Network program. Uh, the Honorable Senator John Whitmire, who's been a strong maverick for us, a radical for change for, our, for us. A round of applause, please. And, and of course, we'd like to thank our wonderful director, Mr. Stephen L. Williams, for his vision to have a program like this. And, and of course, this amazing, dynamic uh, executive team who sit with him. Uh, a special acknowledgement for our guest and our sponsor, our Chief Troy Finner. He's his top cop. He's doing an amazing job for our city. The Honorable Judge Kyle Turner. The, uh, our jazz extraordinaire, Mr. Kyle Turner. We just heard from the Platinum Grammy Award artist, Ms. Mary Griffin. Our great sponsor, the Turkey Leg Hut, Hunt, Hut, Turkey Leg Hut, Mr. William Price and his wife, Nikita Price. And last but not least, uh, our amazing staff, the Community Rancher Network Program. Uh, please give a round of applause. And, and as I call your name, yes, yes, give it up. And, and I, I'd like to acknowledge them by name. So if you're part of the Community Rancher Network staff, just please stand and raise your hand and let people know who you are. We want to acknowledge you for all your hard work. It's definitely not going unnoticed. Uh, Ms. Cynthia Stansfield, who's not here today. Uh, Ms. Angela Hayes, where are you, Angela? She is in the back. Uh, Mr. Michael Long, uh, the DJ over here. Yeah. Ms. Nata Kerber, event extraordinary yeah. MC. Yeah. Ms. Veronica Whaley Peters. Yeah. Mr. Alfredo Ortiz. 
Miss Martine Adderwee, who's not here today. Mr. Wayne Bone Bean Bone. Miss Maria Castro Bonavi. Mr. Roger Cantu Chancellor. Miss Mary Henry. Miss Laquita Burks. Mr. Devin Ross, where are you, sir? Mr. Ross. Mr. Richard Cowles, our way in the back. Mr. James Toothpick McLemore, there he is. Miss Robin Osby. Pretty boy Frederick Brayton. Miss Camille Barrios. Thank you so much. This has been a wonderful occasion. And I just have to say it again, not only is Ms. Nader a wonderful counselor, but she's a great MC event co coordinator. So everybody on Team Nader who assisted with the decoration from start to finish, the program, everything, please stand to be recognized. And Mr. Bell, I'm sorry, but there's an additional acknowledgement that we need to add. If you'll come forward, please. We cannot let this day pass without a special acknowledgement to you, Mr. James Bell. out of here without acknowledging your leadership, your genuineness, your humility, and your heart. Just like any family, somebody plays the father role, that would be Mr. Bell. And you have held us together, and we are eternally grateful to you. And so, on behalf of the staff of the Community Reentry Network Program, we hope you'll accept this small token of appreciation. So we will be closing with a benediction, but before we do that, I just need to ask everyone to uh, be aware of the order of the day. As soon as we close, as soon as there's the benediction and close, the graduates will be asked to take a group picture so that you can have it for always. And then they will be going to um, return their caps and gowns. We're going to do a little bit of space moving. And we ask that everyone be patient because we would like the graduates to be the first to be served. Is that all right with everyone? Yeah. OK. Well, it, it seemed like it was going to be forever, but we came, and now it's already done. It's, it's already done, but it's just beginning. So graduates, I hope you'll continue your walk and your purpose. And I'll ask Pastor Anderson if he will join us to close. Let us pray. Father, thank you for um, this great occasion. Uh, and Father, watch over everyone that participated and everyone that attended. Uh, uh, we just thank you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.